patient and exhortation and comfort. So if you want to understand what the Bible says prophecy looks like when it comes to the spiritual gifts. So if you're body, if you're in the body, everyone here is in the body, I pray. You've given your life to Jesus. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you can operate one of the nine spiritual gifts given by the Holy Ghost. Then you can operate it. If it's been given to you by the Holy Ghost, you can operate that gift. Well, one of them is prophecy. But this is the definition of what prophecy looks like when it comes to the spiritual gift. Some of us are scholars enough that we know... Um, and here's where the confusion lies. Because sometimes we hear prophecy and we think that this is what prophecy should sound like or look like and what it is. But the confusion is between whether it was prophesied through a spiritual gift or through the office of <clears throat> prophet. And that's where I'm going to try to get rid of that muddy water. Okay, that's so, so let's look at prophecy as body ministry prophecy. That's what this scripture is referring to, spiritual gift, the first verse we read. So edification, we're going to start looking at this definition. Edification is to spiritually lift up someone. To lift up, when you edify, it's to, to build something up. That's edification. So it's a spiritual, but under a spiritual way. It's going to be godly. It's not just a tap on the back and saying, hey, you're a real good looking bud. You know, bud, you're really good looking. You know, that's that's might make his ego feel good. But when we lift him up through a spiritual exhortation, or not an exhortation, but an edification, that's different. It looks different. It comes out differently. And that's what body ministry does. So when you're operating the gift of prophecy, that's one of the things that it will do. It will either edify someone and lift them up, or the body in general. It could be the body in general. When we get into body ministry, the next thing that can really throw people off with understanding that we have a lack of, my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. We, we hear comes an interpretation and we think it's prophecy. Well, if it doesn't exhort, if it doesn't comfort and doesn't edify, that's prophecy. So sometimes it comes out differently when it comes to, to the interpretation it comes. And that's a distinction we'll study later. Try not to get too heavy. Try not to confuse anybody. Does everybody feel heavy all of a sudden? Is it getting too deep? Donna? Too deep? Let's get a little light here. Monotheism. No. <laughs> that should really blow our hair. Right there. No, if you don't mind, I just want to let you say, not the prophet, but the prophet. It sounds so different. There is a distinction. There is a difference. So, this is what body ministry looks like. This is what someone that prophesies in the body operating the gift, they either use edification or exhortation. Let me explain exhortation. This is according to definition. It is to strongly urge or appeal that the manner of which inspires to action. So I strongly urge you or appeal to you and tell you, this is the will of God in your life. Say yes, Josh. Or Justin. Say yes, Justin. Josh said yes, I'm in. <laughs> right? But it it's an appeal. It's an urgent appeal. It's strong. And it says, this is, this is how the Lord is moving. You need to move as well. And that urgency inspires you. It motivates you. And, and you decide to move into that direction. That's exhortation. That's what the Bible definition is of exhortation. I looked these up on purpose because I wanted to see 
Now here's the interesting part. As I was praying this morning, the Spirit of God hit me about comfort. Now most of us, when we think of comfort, what do we think of? Like a teddy bear, a couch, a couch, a teddy bear. Now, some of us are really spiritually minded and, and know our word. We know the Bible, and the Bible tells me that the Holy Ghost is my comfort, right? The comforter, that's, that's my comfort, right? Well, yes, but in reference to this, when it comes to body ministry, and it comes to prophecy, and it comes out as comfort, how many need to pray about everything? How many need to hear the voice of God before they make a decision? How many people are wondering, is that the will of God in my life? And then someone comes up and says something to you. And it confirms the very thing that you were, you were sure that you heard from God, but you're not sure if it's you or if it truly is God. And then all of a sudden, you realize through confirmation because someone else spoke it, and you say to yourself, wow, that's great, it is God. And you're comforted. Now here's, here's the part that God put in my, my heart. Sometimes we quickly disregard when someone comes to us and says something that we already know. The attitude that rises up is, I know that. Why are you telling me? You know, someone comes up, you're doing great, you need to read your Bible, keep reading your Bible, keep praying. I know that. We don't realize that that person could be operating in the gift of prophecy and God's pointing it out to you, this thing you already know, for the fact that it could be a detriment down the road. We could neglect that. We could end up neglecting that. And the prophecy given is or that that thing that you we already know can be for us to sharpen our pencil. Right? And it just so happens someone is being used and they just come up to you and just make a statement and you fluff it off, thinking, well, I know that. Why would they say that? That's off the wall. But we don't tweak in. Or pay attention that it could very well be the voice of God. So the Lord kind of impressed that in my heart. There's a tendency to do that. And we don't recognize when the Spirit of God is using something. Just to do something as simple as comfort you. That that thing you've been praying about for weeks. If we just listen to the voice. It's already God has answered. He answered 21 days ago. Daniel. But there's been a battle. Right? We know about that, right? Daniel prayed. I'm like going off in some rabbit hole here. Daniel prayed for 21 days. But the Lord already answered him. But there was a battle going on in the heavenlies. So he couldn't get his answer. Right? We don't know. And so all of a sudden we get comforted. If we keep our ears tuned to what the Spirit's doing, we may realize that just that, what seems like an off statement, is really the voice of God. So that that kind of opened up my heart a little bit to it, and I wanted to share that about comfort. <clears throat> so um, God does not waste words. So when he's moving in the spirit and doing things, he does not waste words. Sometimes it's just one word is all you need. And that word opens up your heart to exactly what the Lord is trying to do in your life. <clears throat> so we need to realize lies. Uh, he may be pointing out an area in our life that we need to focus on. So any uh, spirit-filled believer can operate with spiritual gifts. If you're spirit-filled, you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in an unknown tongue, then you can receive one of the nine gifts of the Spirit. And you can operate those gifts. And that's what it looks like. So now let's go to the prophet, the office of the prophet. So I, I hope I've given enough information for now to see a distinction of body ministry and prophecy. 
and how that operates and what it does, the three things, edification, exhortation, and comfort, according to the word of God. That is how the, it works in body ministry. So the prophet. Now the prophet, the prophet can prophesy. A prophet can prophesy in that same manner. He can edify and exhort and he can comfort. But there is a difference within the office of a, of a prophet. The prophecies can also serve. And here's the difference. If we start to read the scriptures and we look at all the scriptures. Remember we use scriptures to interpret scriptures. And we see most prophets, especially Old Testament. We only have this really one good example of a New Testament prophet. But that's because all the Old Testament, those that heard, were prophets. And we have plenty of examples, right? But they gave a warning. The difference between edification and exhortation and comfort is warning. The Old Testament prophets and prophets today that hold the office of prophet will often give a word with warning. It, it has a tendency to, to line up with an ultimatum. You know what I mean by that? If you serve the Lord, your calling will be beneficial. If you do not, this will happen to you. That's how the prophet often operates. Sometimes his prophecy comes out with guidance. So it guides your path. You're, you're not sure. It's kind of like the body ministry of comfort that I just brought up. That you're not sure about something, you've been praying about it, and then all of a sudden the prophet comes through and he makes a statement, and that guidance is what directs your path. So that often the prophet will have a word of guidance for you. Or the church could be prophesied to the church, and the church needs that direction. Because it needs to hear the voice of God. For whatever reason, it required the prophet to do so. God had to use a prophet. And sometimes it's foretelling. Now here is where I want to, to, to get your attention. Because unfortunately, Satan is a counterfeit. We know that. And he uses familiar spirits. And he does certain things. And, and what we know as foretelling, or most common people think of as foretelling, does not come from the spirit of God. Right. It comes from a familiar spirit, or Satan himself, devils, and they're familiar spirits that are demons, and because they know your life, because they're around us, they know your life, someone can foretell something, because it's doing it through the power given to the enemy, he is the prince and power of the air, right, so while he has not all power, he has some. And he's got those familiar spirits to do certain things. So some of you may be like, whoa, this is wacky. What's Doug talking about right now? Ancient aliens and, and all this stuff. But that's because there is a truth to it. And some of us have not received that kind of education. Uh, I don't find too many people in North America really understand demonic world. I could take you anywhere else in the world, and they are prevalent in knowledge that there is a huge demonic world out there. We see it differently, though. Pornography, it comes at us differently. You just don't realize it. Right. Addictions, yeah. I could go on. But this is how we see it. We just don't realize that's the tool of the devil. The devil, the devil uses that. Seances. All these, look at, you can't watch TV without seeing some commercial that talks about mediums or seances, necromancers, the Bible calls them, people that are contacting the dead. Oh, it's your grandmother, it's your this. No, 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 it isn't. It's satanic. It is a demon. And we could get into that at another couple lessons, some of it, we are down the road. But for now, what's important is, what I remember meeting a person once, and I was witnessing to them, like, it just happened. 
because he had books on angels all around.